Namco Museum. I've reviewed quite a few of these arcade collections. Tatia Legends have been on my worst list two years in a row. I don't know why these publishers tend to put some of their most obscure games and then put a couple you might actually want to play and then put that up for sale for $40. This time around, while they do have lesser known games on here, it has more popular ones than filler ones. Out of the 11 games on this collection, six of them are the original game or the updated one. And I do think that's a bit of a cheat. Why not just group them together? The only reason they separate them is to pad out the list. I had a lot more fun with this one. I recognized it quite a few of these games. Rolling Thunder was the one that caught me by surprise. I totally remember playing this in the arcade. So like I usually do with these collections, I'm going to just talk about them in the order I enjoyed them the most. And I'm just going to combine the games that have two versions for it. And just as a warning to anyone who's never watched my videos before, I am terrible at video games. So if you're wondering why I die all the time, that's why. Dig Dug was always a favorite for me. It just had simple gameplay. You dig down to destroy monsters before they get to the surface. You can crush them with rocks or blow air into their mouths and make them explode into pieces. I really like how the music would just cut out if you don't move. <laughs> fun little touch. I'm sure the gameplay was simple, but it was still enjoyable. Rolling Thunder 1 and 2 had you play as a spy who has to kill some villains. There were a lot of doors you can escape into, or you could just use them to find some weapons. They will have different types of enemies, and some might charge at you, or they might shoot at you, or throw bombs. They color-coded themselves so they wouldn't get confused at meetings, I assume. Alright, David, you're gonna be the purple hooded guy. So you're gonna just run at him. Can I have a gun? Or a knife? What? We can't afford that. You gotta get your hugging techniques down. Maybe if you get good at that, you'll get a yellow hood and then you'll get a gun. Cause we're not made of money over here. Rolling Thunder 2 has some better locations and enemies, but they each have a certain charm to them. Sky Kid has you controlling a small plane. They'll have you fly brief missions. You'll be dodging planes and the trucks that will shoot bullets at you. Well, halfway through, you can pick up a bomb, which you can use to destroy your main target. The missions were not very long and it wasn't very hard. I loved how you could loop around and get behind the enemies. And and they could do that as well. It was just a very enjoyable plane shooter. Splatterhouse! I had never played this before, but I hadn't heard of it. It felt like it was a Friday the 13th game, but it just couldn't afford the license, so it came up with another story, other than Jason's trying to escape hell. The story in this is that there is the possessed mask, and it brings this person that died back to life in order to save someone, I guess. I know what they were trying to do, but it felt like they were clearly trying to step through landmines, so they wouldn't get sued by the people who make Friday the 13th. It's a very violent game, but it was filled with green blood, so I guess it's okay? Why not? It worked with the SNES version of Mortal Kombat. I really like the animations that would happen when you used a weapon on an enemy. Slamming a bad guy to the back of a wall was very funny. Plus it had a continue function. I wasn't expecting it, but it was very appreciated. Tank Force. It has you as a tank trying to take on entire platoons of tanks. And somehow you're actually succeeding. You could destroy a great deal of the obstacles in front of you. And you could sneak up on enemy tanks in order to take them down. I like the power-ups. There would be some that would let you fire in four directions. Or even ones that let you shoot through walls. And you could destroy tanks without ever having to worry about them blowing you up. You will advance on a map. And I thought that was a neat way of setting up the boards. Galga and Galga 88 were space shooters. And they were very difficult. I do think Galga 88 tried to make it a little bit easier by giving you the option to use two planes starting out. But it makes it easier to target and it costs you an extra life. I don't particularly like space shooters, and the original game didn't change my mind on it. It was fairly basic, but I enjoyed Galaga 88 more. It was still hard, but the dual ships and colorful environments were better. Pac-Man and Pac-Man Versus. I really don't like Pac-Man. I'm more of a fan of Mrs. Pac-Man. The reason is it's just the same board over and over again. Mrs. Pac-Man changes it up a little. However, it seems like Mrs. Pac-Man is wrapped up with legal rights issues, so they had to put the original game on here. Sure, it's enjoyable once, maybe twice, but after that, I just wouldn't play it, as it's just the same thing, just a little bit faster. Worse yet is Pac-Man Versus. It was just terrible. You control the ghosts that go after Pac-Man, but you never know where Pac-Man is, and it drags on since you you need to get a certain number of points and it gets kind of boring if you have two switches and have the other people play as the ghosts but i don't have two so i couldn't test it it sucks that you couldn't play as pac-man with one switch tower of Durego was the only really bad one on this list this is a maze adventure game you have to collect a key and find a door you do this by fighting monsters and collecting treasures it was very confusing there was a hint system which helped you understand what you're supposed to do on each floor but if you have to explain what you have to do in the level with an elaborate faq on each floor trying to 
explain how to play the game, I think you overthought the gameplay. Worse yet, the sword hitbox was terrible. They often want you to kill a certain number of enemies, but it's more of a hope and a prayer if it even connects with them. More times than not, you'll just die, and they'll place you somewhere randomly on the map. It was just a very dull game. I really liked the menu system. You could switch between the games easily. It was also very easy to change a setting you didn't like. I also really liked the backdrops for these games. They even have alternate versions of them if you want to change things up. There's also a challenge mode where they have you play a quick game and then give you a goal. Quite a few of these games could be played with two players, but since nobody wanted to play them with me, I just couldn't test it. I'm sure it works just fine, because these are just arcade games. Namco Museum is the best arcade compilation that I've reviewed so far. It had a great presentation, and while I wish they would give us different games other than the updated version of their older games, I appreciate seeing the changes in the sequel games, and I wouldn't have that perspective if I didn't play the original games. So I kind of see why they added them, but I still think they should have grouped them together. Now this is normally $39.99, and I don't think it's worth that much. I got it for $4.99. It's definitely worth it then. None of these games is something that you're going to go back to. You're going to play this for the memories, and then you'll be done with it. So if you're looking to buy this, I would wait for it to go on a very deep sale, just like I did. Mm -hmm.